Hello everyone and welcome to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. Today's video we're going to go over disable object and enable disabled object. And while we're taking a look at these two runtime actions, we will compare them to destroy so that we can see the differences. And yeah, we'll get started. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you disabled object, what exactly it does as far as this runtime goes. And we'll see up here that there's no options and it just says invalidate this object. So the one important thing to know is that from the runtime action, you can only call it on itself to disable. All right, and if I click OK, this is a the dog, when it has zero HP, it disables itself. And then my player is just the normal player for now with a slash. And now we'll go into the play test and we'll show you exactly what happens. So when I attacked the dog, it disabled. Now one thing I want to point out real quick is that in your debug objects or uh, object data you'll see that there are still two dogs here and one dog is an idle so we know that this dog is that and then the other dog its action is disable so it's in disable and it's just it's just chilling there basically. So that's one big difference between destroy is that if it was destroyed, this object would be gone, All right? But disable, we get to keep this a little bit. All right, so let's get out of here. All right, so that was the disable runtime. Now let's take a look at the enable runtime. And for that, we're gonna go into the player object and we're going to select the state that I've added called enable. It's what I want it to do when the player presses B. And so I'm gonna add a runtime and I'm going to add enable disabled object. And so we'll come up to the settings here and we'll see that we only have one setting and it's to choose an object to enable. So we learn a couple things right away from this setup. And that is one, if you're using this runtime action to enable an object, you have to do it from another object. You can't do it from its own self. And then two, when we pull down this drop down menu for the object to select and let's say that we want to enable the dog if it's disabled you know the one that we're destroying you'll notice that we don't have another box here with the option of single all or locked parent object and that is very similar to how restore destroyed object is it's the same exact setup so if you enable using this runtime it's going to try to enable all dog objects that are on the scene so if you have two or three dog objects that get disabled, using this one time is going to enable all of them. And you can't really specify which one to enable using this runtime. Now we'll get into how you can be more specific in a bit, but this is just for this runtime's sake. So I'm going to add it or click okay and add it to here. And now we can play test. And bear with me on these next parts, we're gonna be spending a lot of time talking and in this debug menu about disable versus destroy. So we have our dog one, it's an action idle. I hit it, it goes to its disabled state, disables itself. And now I press B, it's gonna enable itself and pay attention to what happens to it. You'll see it starts blinking. So the one thing about disable is that it pauses wherever that object is, the invincibility timer, the state it's in, it pauses it. And then when you enable it, it takes off right where it left off. And this is one of the biggest differences between destroy and disable, is that when you restore a destroyed object, it starts completely over. There's no way to say where it starts. When you enable a disabled object, you actually start right where you left off. One of the last things I'll show in this video is how you can actually manipulate the action while it's disabled, okay? But we'll get into that a little later. Now let's move over to this uh, left one, uh, just the normal dog. And for this one, I'm gonna pull up the details here. And we're gonna see that there's some switches, okay? There's an invincibility switch. And then you'll notice that there's a disable switch, all right? Now we'll get into this one here in a minute, but let's let's just notice this invincibility switch when I attack this object. So just as I was saying, it uh, turned on, 
but it's not running through the time. It, it paused it. You'll also notice that the disable switch is on. Okay. And you can also, let's say that we want to scale it. We can change some of its properties even though it's disabled. Okay. So I'm just going to scale it 150 on the X. We'll just do that so that it's obvious. And then instead of pressing B, I'm going to click off disable. And you'll see that it enabled, it ran through the invincibility time, and it kept the manipulation that we did to its X. If we compare the two, you can see that that one's definitely different. So that is another difference between destroy and disable, is that you can still manipulate some of the, the variables in a disabled object. All right, so now let's check out where this disable switch is. I'm gonna X out here. And you can find the disable switch in switch management of every object. You'll see it's right here. And it says when turned on, this object is invalid. And so this is how we can actually disable other objects. Because remember, the runtime action can only disable itself. So now I'm going to just delete this link entirely. And we're going to go to the player here. And I'm going to copy the slash input here, paste it to a disable action. Also make it higher priority so that it goes first. And then, yeah, I'll make a link back just for, uh, let's see here, get these organized a bit. And so now we can go to the disable action. I can click start or uh, add. <laughs> I can go to change switch variable. And I can say the dog, and I could say all now or single. And I can click disable, and I can say on. And then with enable, I could do the same thing. I could actually skip this for now, and then add a switch and say the dog, I want, well, let's do this. Let's do the single, I want disable off. But on disable, I want to do them all. That's what we'll do. We'll disable them all, but we'll only enable one. All right, so now in this play test, if I press A, all of them disable because I'm turning on all the switches. And then if I press B, I'm only turning off the single objects disable switch. And so we only got one back. All right, so now that we've seen some of these switches, let's see another issue that we need to solve or at least no is there and we have an option, is that we, we have that disabled object still. Now if we were to leave the scene and go back into the scene, that disabled object is enabled again automatically. So how do we maintain that uh, disable on an object? And that is done by going into the object that you want to maintain, going into basic settings, and clicking maintain state at end of scene. And that will keep the disable if you need that option. So now, since that's on our dog, we can play test. We can real quickly disable them both. We can leave the scene, come back into the scene, and they are still disabled. And we can press B, and we can still enable that one through the switch. So that is how we can control, have a little more control with our scene transfers. So the last thing I want to go over is how you can control the action that these objects are in. So let's say that instead of disable, let's call this one next action. Okay, so this will be the next thing that happens when it's enabled. And we can get rid of this. And for the most part, it's going to stay the same. For instance, we're still going to disable via a switch. But on the enable, we're not going to enable them because we, I, I just want to show you that this works and we're going to add, we're going to add an execute object action and we're going to select the dog. I have a video for this, by the way, if you need to know more about this action and we're going to select the action to go to the next action and we're going to say all, I want all of them to do this. So now when I press B, these are skipped. So it's going to 
execute object action. And we can hit play. We're going to hit F1, go to debug, pull this down here. They're both in idle. We're going to disable them. Okay, they're still both in idle. And now we're going to hit B. And you'll see that we jumped to the next action. All right. So then you could enable them and you can control what action they're in. So for instance, we could go to the dog and say the next action is we want a applied filter of noise, let's just say uh, instantly. Okay, so that's what this state is. And now in the player, we will execute their action first. We'll unskip this because we do want to disable it. And then we'll hit play. So here we will, now I can close this now because we can see this visually now. I will disable them and I will enable them. And remember, I only enabled one because I only did the single. And so it went right to its state and was there. You can't do this with destroy and restore object. You can only do this with disable and enable. So I went over the differences, I guess, more while I was going through the process. So hopefully I didn't lose you too much. If I did lose you on this, feel free to comment, ask your question, or stop by the Discord and ask. We'll be able to help you out. And with that said, I'll see you at the next video.